Wana Yesu wasifiwe. Wana sifiwe tena. Amen. Praise God. Nashukuru praise and worship team. Yongozi wa ibada. Netubaliki, mnetuogoza vizuri. Tumekua mbele za mungu, tumebalikiwa. Hata kama masai meenda. Uwefu wa mungu huko pamoja nasi. Na ninashukuru mungu kwa mwako yote ya kwa metenda. Haa. Sina masai meenda sana lakini nitalete neno la Mungu amini ya kwamba tutabarikiwa. Ah, nitataka siku ya leo kuongea juu ya dealing with altars, especially satanic altars. Na ningeanza na kusema ya kwamba madhabahu ama altars zinakuwa aina mbili. Aina ni ya Mungu ama ni ya shetani na an altar is a legal ground for operation na ikiwa ni legal ground for operation ni ida mungu atawale kupitia kwa yale matabahu ama shetani na ni bahadi ambapo kukiwa na matabahu kuna uweza ama kuna power kwa inatoka katika ile matabahu na ningetaka tukaweza kusoma neno la Mungu katika kitabu cha Judges ngua Judges chapter 6 from verse 1 Judges chapter 6 from verse 1 na tuone Again the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord and for seven years he gave them into the hands of the Midianites Because the power of Midian was so oppressive, the Israelites prepared the shelters for themselves in mountain crates, caves, and strongholds. Whenever the Israelites planted their crops, the Midianites, Amalekites, and other Eastern peoples invaded the country. They camped on the land and ruined the crops on the way to Gaza, and they did not spare a living thing for Israel. Neither sheep, nor cattle, nor donkeys. They came up with their livestock and their tents like swarms of locusts. It was impossible to count the men and their camels. They invaded the land to ravage it. Midian so impo impoverished the Israelites that they cried unto the Lord, Lord for help. When the Israelites cried to the Lord, be uh, Lord because of the Midian, he sent them a prophet who said, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. I brought you up out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. I snatched you from the power of Egypt and from the hand of all your oppressors. I brought them from before you and gave you the alarm. I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not worship the gods of the Amorites in whose land you live, but you have not listened to me. Bwana asifiwe. Neno linasema ya kwamba wakati mmoja wana wa Israeli walivamiwa na adui ambaye alikuja kama nzigi akipitia kwa watu ambao alijiita wa Midiani na wa Amaleki na wakati adui alivamia ile nchi neno la Mungu nasema ya kwamba ile nchi ikawa na shida ikawa under operation kukawa hakuna chakula hata wana wa Israeli walikuwa na kificha wanakaa katika mashimo wanakaa katika mapango wanakificha kwa sababu adui alikuwa amevamia nchi kwa hivyo there was no security in the land wakipanda chakula adui anakuja na hadibu kila kitu wakifanya jambo zuri ninaharibiwa Adui alikuwa amewafanya wakae bila amani hata kidogo wakijaribu kuchindua wanarudishwa chini na wakawa wanakaa kama watu ambao hawakai katika nchi yao na neno la Mungu nasema ya kwamba walikuwa wamefanya dhambi na Mungu akawaachilia miaka saba wakawa katika shida lakini wakati waliomba Mungu ili wajue kwa nini mambo inaenda hivyo 
Mungu akawanenea kupitia kwa nabii moja. Yule nabii akawaambia kwamba a mkumbuke vile mlitolewa katika nchi ya Misri na mkakombolewa na mkono wa Mungu ambao ni mkono ambao ulikuwa na nguvu na mkaletwa katika nchi ya Hadi lakini wakati ambapo mmeingia katika nchi ya Hadi mmeacha kuendelea katika njia za Mungu na mmechukua miungu ya Amaleki mmechukua miungu mingine ambayo sasa mnaiabudu makosa ambayo wana wa Israeli walifanya ni ya kwamba walipoingia katika ile nchi walisahau na Mungu wao wakasahau kuinua madhabahu ya Mungu katika ile nchi na wakaweza kuinua madhabahu ya miungu mingine pale na wakati waliinua madhabahu mengine neno la Mungu rasema ya kwamba operation ikawashukia na wakawa na shida nyingi sana wakati ambapo madhabahu ambayo si ya Mungu inakubaliwa inainuliwa kuna kuwa na shida nyingi hebu tusome Deuteronomy 22 verse 1 to 5 Deuteronomy verse chapter 22 na itengeneze wapande hii sione vizuri pale. Ah, if you see you are okay, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy. Is that it Deuteronomy 22 verse 1 to 5. Si si 22, mwingine nimekosea kidogo lakini nitakwambia tu. Ah. Let me confirm lakini lile neno nitakonfirm tu ile neno linasema ya kwamba Israel waliambiwa ya kwamba wakiingia katika ile nchi ya hadi ile nchi Mungu amewapatia waende wakaseto pale wa make sure ya kwamba wame destroy wameharibu madhabahu yote ambayo watakuta pale madhabahu yote madhabahu ya baali madhabahu ya ashera madhabahu ya kuabudu miungu mingine wanapoingia katika ile nchi wakaambiwa ya kwamba destroy all the the, the altars of baal all the altars of ashera wakaambiwa ya kwamba wa break it down wakaambiwa wa smash wakaambiwa wa baal miungu yote iko katika milima ingine iko chini ya miti ingine iko katika high places wakaambiwa ya kwamba kama mnataka kufaulu kama mnataka kubarikiwa kama mnataka kuendelea mbele mnapoingia katika nchi ya hadi tafadhali mkaweza kuinukia hiyo miungu na kuinukia ile madhabahu na kuiangusha ili mkaweza kuishi katika amani muweze kuinuliwa na kubarikiwa katika nchi lakini msipoangusha msipohadibu ile madhabahu ambayo mtakuta pale utakuta ya kwamba uh, mtaishi under operation and this is what happened wakati uh, wana wa Israeli walikubali wakafanya dhambi na wakakubali madhabahu mengine ya tawali ndio unakuta ya kwamba waliweza kukaa katika shida bahari ambapo tumesoma katika jaji tumeona vile madhabahu ya shetani iliwakalia ikawafinyilia na wakawa under great oppression paka Mungu akamnenea mtu mmoja ambaye alikuwa anaitwa Kidio na Kidio nakaambiwa ya kwamba wewe ni mtu ambaye una nguvu na Mungu amekuteua ili uweze kuokoa wana wa Israeli nataka kusema ya kwamba Kidio alijiona kama ni mtu ambaye hana nguvu alijiona ya kwamba ni kama hawezi na akaanza kutoa 
kwa visaba akasema mimi ndiye mdogo sana kwa jamii yetu hata clan yetu is the smallest one in Israel na sasa siwezi sioni vile ninaweza kukomboa Israeli kutokana na mkono wa midiani lakini Mungu akamwambia nitakuwa pamoja na wewe na ili ushindi upatikane Gideoni lazima ange angefanya jambo lazima angiangusha ngome zote za shetani lazima angiangusha hata madhabahu yote ya shetani na neno la Mungu lasema ya kwamba ukisoma mstari wa 24 neno linasema ya kwamba verse 24 So Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and called it called it the Lord is peace. To this day it is stands in Ophrah of the Abiezrites. Gideon akajenga madhabahu ya Mungu pale and the Numbers 25. That is a night the Lord said to him take the second bull from your father's heart the one seven years old tear down your father's altar to burn and cut it down the asherah pole beside it then build a proper kind of altar to the lord your god on the top of this high ah uh, give your nakambiwa lazima angushe madhabahu yote ya baal na ya ashera na kidioni akafanya hivyo kwa nini kwa sababu wale watu walikuwa katika uh, shida walikuwa na operation kwa sababu walikuwa wamekubali madhabahu ya kishetani madhabahu ya kuabudu miungu mingine iwakalie na kama Mungu angewalebai na watembelee lazima yale madhabahu yote ingeharibiwa ingevunja vunjwa na kwa hivyo Gideon akaambiwa lazima aharibu yale madhabahu na kwa sababu aliogopa watu neno la Mungu lasema ya kwamba akatengeneza mpango na usiku akachukua vijana kumi na wakaenda hata yale madhabahu ilikuwa imejengwa na baba yake na wakaangusha ile madhabahu na hata zile uh, zile uh, ile ndume ya baba yake ya miaka saba akachukua na akaitoa kama dhabihu asubuhi walipoamka wakakuta ya kwamba madhabahu ya bali na ashera imeangushwa chini na wakaanza kulizana ni nani amefanya ile jambo na unajua mtu hawezi akajificha watu wakasema ni Gideon ambaye amefanya hivyo na wakasema aletwa ili aweze kuuawa lakini baba yake akasimama akawaambia kama bali ni Mungu wacha jitetee wacha dhiru na huyu kijana yangu na kutoka hapo baada ya madhabahu ya bali kuangushwa baada ya madhabahu ya shena kuangushwa nakawa amebadilika na amepata ujasiri neno la Mungu lasema the spirit of God came upon him na akaanza kutangaza akapiga tarumbeta na watu wakaja na wakati watu walifika akawaambia sasa inabi sina lazima sasa tujipiganie na tujikomboe kutokana na ya wabidiani na ya wamaleki wakati ambapo madhabahu ile mbaya ya kishetani inahadibiwa inaangushwa Mungu anapata nafasi Mungu anapata nafasi ya kutawala na kuleta utawala wake na kuleta baraka zake watu wanaweza kuwa under oppression na hawajui ni nini ambacho kinaendelea na ni vizuri ukaangalia hata maisha yako ujiulize am i under any oppression je kuna mambo ambayo ime 
nimefinyilia pengine unajaribu kufanya jambo ni kama unaenda round and round and round pengine unagojea muujiza unaona muda umeenda unaendelea paka unashindwa what is happening unajitolea jambo furani lakini kabila hujafika pa kabila hujapata muujiza wako unaona tena umerudi nyuma mahali ambapo lianza wana wa Israeli walikuwa naenda round and round kwa sababu kuna madhabahu ambayo ilikuwa imeinuliwa pahala pale na wakiwa chini ya ile madhabahu hawakeweza kuprosper waliendelea kuwa na umasikini waliendelea kufinyiliwa hata wanaenda kujificha hawana amani hakuna security kwa sababu shetani alikuwa ameinua madhabahu hivyo wakati mwingine ni vizuri kuangalia uangalie umetoka wapi je umeendelea vizuri je umeinuliwa je umeendelea vizuri umebarikiwa umefanikiwa je mambo yako inaenda vizuri mambo yako inaenda speed ama imesimama imara miaka miaka kwa miaka unajaribu jambo hata wengine wanajaribu biashara wanakuta ya kwamba hawafaulu mwingine anakuja anaanza the same business na unaona anafaulu mwingine anakuja anakuacha pale anakuvate ni vizuri ulize je kuna gome yoyote je kuna madhabahu yote ambayo imeinuliwa kinyume na mapenzi ya Mungu baada ya kidioni akuhadibu zile ngome zile madhabahu yote neno la Mungu lasema ya kwamba wakawa na nguvu na wakapigana na adui na wakawashinda na kukawa na utawala na urejesho wa Mungu katika Israeli kwa sababu waliangusha pingamizi zote za shetani na ukiangalia katika neno la Mungu utakuta ya kwamba wale wote ambao walifaulu lazima wagedio na altars zote za kishetani na wainue alta ya Mungu wainue madhabahu ya Mungu ili waweze kufanikiwa katika Genesis chapter 12 verse 6 and 7 Genesis chapter 12 verse 6 Abraham traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of more at Shechem at that time the Canaanites were in the land the Lord appeared to Abraham and he said to your offspring I will give this land so he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him Abraham alipoitwa na Mungu na akatumwa kaambiwa hii ndio nchi ambayo nimekupatia wakati ambapo alienda pale akaenda na akakuta wakanani wamejaa kule na walikuwa na miungu yao neno la Mungu lasema ya kwamba akatembea katika ile nchi au ndani akajua ili yashinde na aweze kupokea ile nchi na iwe ni nchi yake ambayo Mungu amempatia pamoja na uzao wake lazima angejenga madhabahu ya Mungu haiko neno la Mungu lasema ya kwamba Abraham built a altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him na baada ya kuinua madhabahu ya Mungu na kuleta chini yale madhabahu ya wakanani Abraham alikuwa sasa na nguvu na neema na uweza wa kutawala pahala pale alikuwa na neema ya kumiliki alikuwa na neema ya kufanikiwa alikuwa na neema ya kuendelea mbele kwa sababu ameinua madhabahu ya Mungu pahala pale na hata ukisoma neno la Mungu this man became very strong kwa sababu aliendelea kuinua madhabahu ya Mungu and then ukisoma pia Genesis chapter 8 verse 
Genesis chapter 8 verse 20 Utakuta ya kwamba Ichi hile nilikuwa tayari Watu wamefanya dhambi Na hile dhambi mefanya Judgment ya mungu Ifikia hile ichi Wa sababu watu walikuwa meabudu Sanamu na kuinua madhabahu Madhabahu ya, ya dhambi and then, neno la mungu la seba ya kwamba, mungu wa kalete hile fura. Na wakati ya nilete fura, kukawa na a lot of destruction. Lakini verse 20 in the seba. Then Noah built a nata to the Lord. And taking some of the green animals, and the green birds, he sacrificed burnt offerings on them. The Lord smelled in the prison aroma. And said in his heart, never again will I cast the crown because of man, even though every incarnation of his heart is evil from childhood. And never again will I destroy all living creatures as I have done. Baada ya judgment ya mungu, baada ya maji kumadiza watu, noa katoka katika ilea na katoka na wanyama wote. Wanyama mwa likuwa kri Pamoja na ndege na katoa sadaka kwa mungu Na katengeneza madhabahu Na wakati ya litengeneza madhabahu Nendo la mungu na sema ya kwamba Mungu wakasme Na akasikia hiyo aroma Hiyo sme Ika mfrahisha sana Baada ya madhabahu Kutengenezwa Na huyu mutu wabali kwa naitu wa no Na mungu wakasme Sita ruti tena Kumadiza dunia yote Na vitu bilivyo hai tena Sita ruti tena Na mungu waka hapa And that is why unaona hile rinibu Asababu inakumbusha ya kwamba Mungu wali hapa Hata madiza dunia wakati mwingine Hiyo hata Ambayo no wali inua Ikalete ya maa Ikaleta a good fellowship with the God Ikaleta na estonisho Na mungu wakaweza Hata tena Kuwa na mpango mzuri Na watu wake Tukinua madhabahu Ya mungu Mungu wanatutembelea Mungu wanaleta revival Mungu wanaleta na estonisho Na mungu wanaondoa Hata gadabu zake Kwetu kama vya nifani And then Genesis Chapter 26, verse 25. Genesis 26, verse 25. Isaac built a nata there, and the God of the name of the Lord. There he pitched his tent, and there his servants dug away. And there he... Meanwhile, Abimelech had come to him from Gerard with a who with Ahusa, his personal advisor, and the thing called the commander of his forces. Isaac asked them, Why have you come to me, since you were hostile to me, and sent me away? The answer, We saw clearly that the Lord was with you. So he said, There ought to be a sworn agreement between us, between you and you. Let us make a treaty with you. Isaac alienda katika inchi na katengeneza madhabahu ya mungu Wakati alitengeneza madhabahu, neno la mungu na seba ya kwamba Akalitia china la mungu, akaomba Na wakati alinua madhabahu ya mungu, wale atui zake Wakaona huyu mutu wa mebalikiwa Neno la mungu na seba, hata alipochimba kizima kilitoka maji Wa sababu mungu walikuwa pamoja nae And then, huyu mfalime, huyu mungu wabaya naitua Mfalime huyu wabaya naitua, verse 20 Abimele, neno ni nasema ya kwamba, he was a neighboring king Na akaona Akaona isa kamebalikiwa saa Akachukua his personal advisor Na akachukua the commander of the army Na wakaenda pale kwa isa
kanisa na wakamwambia tumekuja ila akanauliza kwa nini mnakuja kwangu wanamwambia since na wakati huo mwingine these guys they were very hostile to Isa lakini sasa wanakuja kwa na anawauliza kwa nini sasa mnakuja kwa na mliniona uh, na mliona mlikuwa a very hostile to me wakamwambia sisi tunataka amani na wewe imagine a fool a king amebeba commander in chief amebeba chief advisor wamemwendea ndugu mmoja tu ambaye hata yeye si mfali meana mi lakini ana Mungu na amenua madhabahu ya Mungu na wamemwambia tunataka ama kwa nini kwa sababu tumeona Mungu wako pamoja na wewe and then Isaac akakomba wakati ambapo tunainua madhabahu ya Mungu ile madhabahu ya Mungu hata ina destroy a maneno na matendo ya adui zetu ile yote shetani ametupangia inatawanyishwa na yale madhabahu ambayo tumeinua katika jina la Mungu kwa hivyo wewe you are a special person wakati unainua madhabahu ya Mungu katika maisha yako shetani hatakushinda hakuna mtu atakushinda ijui kama mnashika vile ninawaambia let me tell you unakumbuka Moldeka alitengenezewa ile kijiti ya kumunyonga pesa ikatolewa siku ikapango afadhali miakaweka sai lakini in the last moment mambo ikabadilika na yule hama habari kwa mpangia yeye ndiye alisurubiwa na akafungwa na kanyongwa kupitia kwa ule mti kwa sababu odhuru Mordecai alikuwa ameinua madhabahu ya Mungu na wakati tunainua madhabahu ya Mungu it doesn't matter ile shetani amekupangia ile yote umepangiwa lazima Mungu atainuka na atakupigania na atakushindania kwa sababu yeye ni Mungu na ana nguvu na uweza kwa hivyo unaona wale watu ambao walikuwa hostile to Isa wanakuja na yeye anawafanya watengeneze tweet ya kwamba hata wadhuri Ezra chapter 3 verse 2 Ezra chapter 3 na Ezra sorry ungua Ezra chapter 3 Yes but then Joshua son of Josada and his fellow priests and his Zerubbabel son of Shealtiel and his associates began to build the altar of the god of Israel to sacrifice burnt offerings on day in accordance with what is written in the book of Moses the man of God despite the fear of the people surrounding they built the altar on its foundation and he sacrificed the burnt offerings on day to the Lord both the morning and evening sacrifices then in accordance with what is written they celebrated the feast of tabernacles with the required number of burnt offerings prescribed for each day Ezra walipotoka katika nchi ambayo walikuwa wameenda ya captivity waliporudi Jerusalem priority yao ilikuwa kuinua madhabahu ya Mungu ilikuwa kutengeneza madhabahu ya Mungu dhabi ilikuwa imefanya wachukuliwe na adui na wapelekwe kwa mateso katika nchi ya Babylon lakini wakati wa rurudi the priority ilikuwa kuinua madhabahu ya Mungu na kulesto worship harapani na wakati walifanya hivyo Mungu aliwapatia ushindi kwa hivyo wapendwa wanataka kusema ya kwamba ni vizuri kuinua madhabahu ya Mungu kwa sababu wakati tunainua madhabahu ya Mungu hata Mungu anatutembelea worship yetu Mungu anashuka neno la Mungu lasema God dwelled in the praises of his, of his people wakati ambapo tunainua madhabahu ya Mungu uwepo wa Mungu na 
nashuka na nakuwa pamoja nasi na wakati tunabudu Mungu Mungu akiwa kati yetu Mungu akiwa natembea hata mashida yetu anashughulikia kama ni mgonjwa anajiangalia anasikia ugonjwa umeenda kama ulikuja with a heavy spirit unasikia imeondolewa na umejazwa na amani na furaha hapo unapitia mambo magumu maybe your heart in your a spirit unasikia kuna uponyaji kwa hivyo ni vizuri wapendwa kuinua madhabahu ya Mungu nina example nyingi lakini wacha nitaje tu moja I have it and Marisa the next 10 minutes or so we'll see. Moses Exodus chapter 17 verse 15. Exodus 17:15. Moses built a nata and called it the Lord is my banner. I say for hearts were lifted up to the throne of the Lord. The Lord would be at war against the Amalekites from generation to generation. Hapa mtumishi wa Mungu Musa alitengeneza madhabahu kwa Mungu na akaita the Lord our banner na akatangaza akanena maneno na akasema ya kwamba Mungu atakuwa na vita na waameleki to generation amaleki walikuwa na tabia mbaya walikuwa nashambulia watu wa Mungu wakati walikuwa nasafiri kuingia nchi ya Kanaa walikuwa na wa, wakifichia wanawashambulia it was a raid uh, a raiding band na Mungu hakufurahia na kwa hivyo unaona Joshua kaenda kupigana na wamaleki na wakati alikuwa napigana nao Amusa naye alikuwa katika mlima watu wakamsaidia kuinua mikono kwa sababu mikono ikiwa juu ya Musa a Joshua alikuwa na shida mikono ikiwa amechoka iko chini wamaleki wanashinda lakini vita hivyo akapigana Joshua na kushinda baada ya kushinda Musa akatengeneza madhabahu na ile madhabahu akasema Mungu ako katika vita na wamaleki kwa hivyo Mungu akainuka kwa sababu ya ile madhabahu na akasema hakuna wakati mwingine amaleki atamshinda Israeli hakuna wakati mwingine kwa sababu Mungu yeye mwenyewe atapigana ile vita tukinua madhabahu ya Mungu hata vita vyetu dhidi ya wamaleki dhidi ya dui wa inayoyote Mungu wetu atatupigania Mungu wetu atatutawalia Mungu wetu atatutendea kwa maana yeye ni mwaminifu kwa maana yeye anaweza Oh thank you Jesus. Ukisoma Samuel 2:7 24 verse 24. David pia alitengeneza madhabahu ya Mungu. Wakati ambapo kulikuwa na tauni katika nchi, there was a play na watu walikuwa wamekufa sana. Ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, but the king replied to Aruna, no. I insist I insist on paying you. David built built a nata <laughs> Okay but the king the pride to Alauna no I insist on paying you for it I will not sacrifice to the Lord my God but to him that cost me nothing so David bought in the threshing floor and the oxen and paid 50 shekels of silver for them David built a nata to the Lord there and the sacrifice burnt offerings and the fellowship offering then the Lord answered the prayer in the behalf of the land and the prayer of Israel was stopped kulikuwa na tauni kulikuwa na prayer kulikuwa na kifo katika nchi watu wengi walikuwa meuawa lakini Daudi alipoenda pale kwa sababu kulikuwa na ile sanduku la agano ambalo lilikuwa limeibiwa lilikuwa limeenda kwa adui na likaachiliwa likaenda kwa mtu anaitwa Launa na Daudi akalifuata pale alipofika pale akaweza kununua ile shamba na akatengeneza madhabahu ya Mungu na baada ya kutengeneza maombi na ile tauni na ile uhalifu
imbifu ikafika kikomo wakati ambapo tunainua madhabahu ya Mungu wapendwa kuna mambo mazuri yanatendeka tuinue madhabahu ya Mungu kwa sababu madhabahu ya Mungu ina hadibu the spirit of oppression in the destroy inainukia roho ya oppression <coughs> tumeona Gideon wakiwa oppressed lakini baada ya madhabahu ya Mungu kutengenezwa na kuinuliwa pale ile oppression ikaondoka wa Midiani watu wa kutoka East wote na wa Maneki wakashindwa godly altars destroy the spirit of oppression are you oppressed in any way tengeneza madhabahu ya Mungu ambayo itahadibu gome zile zote za shetani madhabahu ya Mungu inapotengenezwa it breaks demonic cycles kuna cycles zingine ambazo zinatembea ama zinaonekana katika watu fulani ama jamii fulani for example unaweza kuona jamii fulani kuna mtu alijinyonga and then kukaka kidogo unakuta mwingine amejinyonga kukaka mwingine amejinyonga unaona ni kama saku a mtoto wa sijui gukali kinyonga mtoto wa baba yake akajinyonga na hata mtoto wa yule mwingi inakuwa kama saku na wakati mwingine unakuta hata hiyo spirit inaleta mambo mengi pengine unakuta polygamous family amutu anafanya jambo kwa sababu katika hiyo jamii kuna mtu alikuwa na hiyo madhabahu hata ya polygamy na mambo mengine mengine unakuta ya kwamba ni premature death unaona kuna vifo vivo watu wanakufa katika umri ambao hata si umri amzuri unakuta mambo yanaenda imachua kuna sako furaha ni vizuri mtu ajue hapo kuna madhabahu furaha na haribu ile madhabahu na zile cycles za kurudia shida zinakuwa broken na mtu atapata ushindi kama uko chini nua madhabahu ya Mungu na utapata revival na utapata abada when we raise strong altars to God ah zile hata zinaleta revival zile hata zinaleta abada wakati ambapo tunainua madhabahu ya Mungu hata tunaweza kupigana vita na kushinda adui zetu Eraija alikuwa anajua maana ya kutengeneza madhabahu hata wakati alienda before Aha na Israeli wote aliwapatia chale na akawaambia awacha hawa baali na shera manabi wao watengeneze madhabahu yao na waite miungu yao na mimi nitengeneze madhabahu yao ya ya Mungu wangu na niita Mungu wangu kwa sababu alijua akitengeneza madhabahu lazima atashinda adui wake na kweli before so many people alishinda manabii 400 wa Bali na 450 wa Shea na jina la Mungu akalinua para para akiwa peke yake kwa sababu alijua siri ni kutengeneza madhabahu ya Mungu. Madhabahu kitengenezwa inatupigania. Madhabahu kitengenezwa tunaweza kwenda mbele, tunaweza kufanikiwa, tunaweza kuo forward. Kwa hivyo kama umepitia mambo fulani fulani, siri ni kuvunja madhabahu na kuvunja madhabahu aa ni vizuri ujue ya kwamba utaomba na pia uchukue wakati hata wa kufunga na wakati unaomba na unafunga pia utoe sacrifice kwa Mungu 
Asababu naona kila pahadi katika Biblia ambapo madhabahu ililetwa chini na ikaangushwa kulikuwa na sacrifice. Daudi ana sacrifice, Gideon ana sacrifice ndume ya baba yake unakuta kila pahadi ni kama zinaandamana pamoja breaking and bringing down every ego altar lazima uombe hata ukifunga toa sacrifice and the last one akua mtu wa ku make declaration declaration inafanya kazi wakati unajua siri ya ku declare mambo Endo Ramura sema you decree and decree a thing and you to do have na wale wanajua siri ya declaration siri yake ni ya kwamba usi usi usifanye tu just like that be in the presence of God uwe katika uwepo wa Mungu na ukiwa katika uwepo wa Mungu katika maombi katika fasting meditating upon the word of god na ifike pahali utakuwa tayari ku declare lakini usi declare wakati ambapo hata hujaomba hata hujaomba na unasema ya kwamba declare ukisoma vizuri wale watu ambao walifahamu walifaulu katika declaration they are people who are always in the presence of God Elisha anapoenda na ku declare ya kwamba Mungu wa Israeli atarudisha maombi kwa moto alikuwa amekuwa na Mungu kwa muda mrefu alikuwa mbele za Mungu pahali. Kwa hivyo wakati anajitokeza, tayari ameandaliwa na Roho Mtakatifu kutangaza na kudeclare. Na hata kuna pahali ambapo neno la Mungu linasema Hebu ni ah pahali hapo neno la Mungu lasema ya kwamba ah Ruk chapter 1 verse 19 Ruk chapter 1 verse 19 Ruk and the angel and the angel answered and said to him I am Gabriel who stands in the presence of God and was sent to speak to you and bring you these glad tidings Hapa Malaika anapokukuja kulete habari njema ya kwamba a uh, Elizabeth watabarikiwa na mtoto anasema I am Gabriel who stands in the presence of God ambaye ninasimamaga mbele ya uwepo wa Mungu kwa hivyo hadi create hadi tukusema from nowhere prior to coming and declare this angel always stands in the presence of god kwa hivyo ana nguvu na ujasiri na anapojitokeza anakuja na hiyo neema ya kutangaza kwa sababu anasimama mbele ya Mungu Elisha alikuwa anatumia wakati wake mwingi mbele ya Mungu kwa hivyo akitokea ana declare so when you declare Uh, ujue siri ya kwamba uwe umesimama katika uwepo wa Mungu nataka kumalizia pengine ukiangalia maisha yako unajiuliza ni nini kinaendelea kwa sababu mambo mengine unajaribu na shingo what is happen kama utaona kama kuna alta yoyote pengine umeinua bila kujua imeinuliwa bila wewe kuielewa ni vizuri ku deal with that up ili Mungu akutembelee na kupatia ushindi tukinua madhabahu madhabahu katika hata nyumba zetu jamii zetu tuinue madhabahu ya Mungu tuinue madhabahu katika mioyo yetu tuinue madhabahu ya Mungu katika taifa letu tuinue madhabahu ya Mungu katika kanisa hili tutakuwa connected na Mungu na Mungu atatushindania na mambo yetu itaenda sawasawa Amen. Amen. Nataka kuomba
Na nikiomba kama unasikia kuna jambo getaka tukakuombea. Ah, uh, uchukue tu hatua usongee hapa mbele niombe pamoja na wewe. Na baada ya hiyo maombi utaenda ujipangie ratiba yako ya kuomba, kufunga, kudikrea na Mungu atakutenda pia. Kwa hivyo if you desire to be prayed for, tafadhali utasongea hapa mbele na tutaomba pamoja na wewe. Hallelujah.